All right, so we're gonna start our match review segment for this evening. All this evening, um, we were starting with an Oni match from Farrakhan, who has 1.5 to 2k hours, so way above that adept zone that you should know most of your fundamentals in Dead by Daylight. You should know generally how to moonwalk, generally how to macro pressure gins, etc., etc. Um, Oni is a character that we actually played today. I had, a, I had a phase with liking Oni a lot. Uh, just rush characters in general are just very, very fun and fulfilling characters in Dead by Daylight. You are Undisturbed Ward, though. Top five biggest maps in the game. Uh, also one of the strongest main buildings in the game. Um, so that is not working in your favor, even as Oni, who is a top 10 character. So let's go ahead and take a look at the add on to Okay. You are using speed and duration, which is fine. With Oni, you essentially have... Uh, Three add-on trees that are really, really good for you, and it doesn't really matter too much which orientation of them um, or combination of them that you do use. Uh, you have the extra blood, duration, and speed. You can do double speed, you can do speed duration, duration, duration speed, which is what's happening now. It doesn't matter. Like, those are all good combinations. If you really want to be spicy, Top Knot isn't actually too bad. It got, it used to be like his crutch uh, add-on because it was just so good. It's still all right. So if you want to mix it up or run something silly, you can do that, but, um, any combination of those three add-on trees is really good. Um, in terms of your build, your build's a pretty standard Oni build. You have an info perk, monitor to get closer to people to get that first hit, infectious because you're a slugging character, and corrupt because you are a time sink character. So, really perfect build if you're losing. Um, if these survivors are like extra sweaty, you may have perhaps needed an extra slowdown. In that case, I probably would have swapped maybe monitor for like deadlock as well or something like that. But that's the only thing I could potentially see going on with your build. Hey, MBD. How's it going? Hey, friend. Hopefully your money's treating you well. All right. Let's go ahead and go to match. Uh, you are... Hey, yeah, you spent... <laughs> you spent, like, a good 10 seconds just kind of chilling. Um, that is... If somebody immediately spawns on the gen, that's already, like, 10 seconds on a gen. Which, they're only 90 seconds, so that's already a ninth of it done. Doesn't seem like that's a big deal, but it kind of is. <laughs> and somebody was. Somebody did spawn a gen pretty immediately. Oh boy, the old greed gen and the sprint burst. My favorite. I ran into a lot of that today. You did get an early first hit, which is really, really good. Okay. Make sure you're picking up your blood. Yeah, make sure you're picking up your blood. If you're doing what I think you're probably like doing in your head, which is like, I'm leaving some blood for later so I can set my next blood fury, you're not even in your first blood fury. Um, I would start like leaving blood for later, quote unquote, after you've already gotten your first blood fury. That makes sense. But doing it before you even have your first one, it's putting the, the cart before the horse. Make sure you pick up your blood initially. Yeah, having to take time to go back and get it is not the most ideal. Ooh, the Sabo. Oh, you play Oni when Billy's better? I mean, Oni's very, very fun and has more slugging potential than Billy does. Also, I think his power has a little bit more creativity to it. That that would be my explanation, that more slugging potential and more creativity with his power. More flexibility with his power. Yeah, you don't even find the person. What I would recommend, honestly, instead of barbecue, run ultimate weapon. Not only can you find people immersing like that, but also you can um, pop Blood Fury, open a locker, and then just get the screams as you're running along. So I would recommend that over barbecue. If finding people is a problem that you have. Oh, this, yeah, this, that, you had the right idea. That pallet is weak, is extremely weak on this side. This is only like a foot long. You could just like walk around that, and you should have. Um, but you just choose to like walk up and kick it for some reason. You had the right idea the first time, but then you like hesitate and went back around. Yeah, Oni is probably the best practitioner of ultimate weapon in the game. 
Like, he is the best bit killer. So you're kind of just like... You do a lot of lollygagging at the beginning of this match. Like, a lot of lollygagging at the beginning of this match. I know you get saboed at first, but like, you fail to find the people around that like, just did that. And then you kind of like, hang out a lot and let them pick up the dude. Like, when you're only running one slowdown, especially one that turns off, like, prep intervention, you have to be, like, your playstyle has to be, like, extra sweaty. Because, like, that's kind of, like, the ratio of, like, um... That's kind of, like, the, the, the ratio from slowdown to, like, your playstyle is the... You can run no slowdown, but then you have to play extremely sweaty. Tons of slugging, tons of proxy camping, tons of tunneling. Oh, do you still buy? Yes, Butterscotch. She still is, which is sucky. I was playing it today and it was really ugly. However, uh, if you run, like, like, do slow down, you don't have to play as hard because the slow down will kind of enact that pressure naturally. So it's kind of like the ratio you're looking at. Luckily for you, you're playing a, <clears throat> a, a, a killer that can snowball fairly easily, so it's not the worst thing in the world, but. You have spent basically. It took you three minutes and forty seconds to get your first hook into a match. If they were being efficient on gens, they would have had tons of gens already popped. So it's almost like an error on the efficiency of the survivors at that point, and not because like you've done anything. Once again, you. I would recommend ultimate weapon for you. You have a, a very, very hard time locating and finding survivors, and you end up just kind of, like, wandering around a lot after you slug somebody, after you down somebody. Like, you downed David in the main building. You know where he vaguely is. But you, you haven't gone in there to check for him or to pick him up. So you just end up, like, just, like, walking around and doing nothing. Match time is gen time. Time spent not pressuring the gens or in chase is, like, time that the, the, the generators are getting done. So the fact that you're just having multiple instances of you just kind of like wandering around is not good. Hey Darth, it's good to see you. I'm pretty good since the uh, Xenor guy released today. I was very happy to finally get that done. So you know where they are. They just they just unhooked. Yeah, and there goes the gem. It's so like now you're being forced to tunnel because you've spent so much downtime in this match, you're also still not picking up your blood. And I'm not quite sure why you're not doing that. But like, you're essentially being 115 man with Katana right now, which is not good for you. Hundred and Oni and Hundreds? How's that progress going? How close are you? You should definitely be proud of that if you're not. The, all the sprint burst is rough, I will say that. Like, having almost a whole team running sprint burst is really nasty to deal with on any killer. Luckily, you are a top 10 killer. Oh, you just got robbed there. That sucks. You're not picking up your blood. You're literally just chasing as a normal killer for some reason. And you keep getting infectious procs, which means the team's all around you. You are literally the slugging killer. You're probably one of, the, one of, if not the best slugging killers in the game. And you are consistently getting infectious procs, but not... They keep picking her up. This should... This... I, I don't mean this in any way, uh, in any sort of offense to you, or any sort of condescension, but, like, this should not be happening. You are the most effective slugging killer in the game. You should not be having your slugs constantly picked up without you, you having something to say about it. Like, the fact that this Lori has just consistently been picked up off the ground... Can, it's just kind of like, I, I, it's not even that like you don't know that they're there because every time you down somebody, you're getting infectious procs. So you know they're there. You're just kind of like letting them do it. And I'm not sure why. 500 or 400 with Oni. That's a lot. Like, th that's like, that's nothing to sneeze at. Like, you're getting up there with how long those characters have been out. That's pretty impressive. Luckily, that pallet was on the other side and not on the left side. That pallet's really strong.
You spent most of this game either looking for survivors or outside your power. So like, I don't think it's any uh, wonder why you're in the situation that you're in. Okay. I hate. I that's what I found today. I didn't know his his camera looks straight down right now, like that twins bug. Very gross. That's what I was recommending earlier, Darth. Before you stopped in, it was, it was like you should probably use ultimate weapons since you were having a hard time finding people. You need to actually start hooking people because like the game's almost over and, and you don't have you don't have like any hooks to your name. Like nobody is like you have one hook on Lori and that's it. Like this game is essentially over. You shouldn't be at two gens with only one hook. That's not a good situation to be in. Hey, you know to go pick up your last slugged person, because they're the ones that, that are most susceptible to being picked up, because they've already recovered. So that's good. I'm glad to see you doing that. So you hear Steve on the ground right there. I'm not sure why you don't go up and try to hook him. Just let him get the save right there too. You're just not very aware of where survivors are. Which is why I think you should honestly run ultimate weapon. And it's weird because you have infectious fright, so you've been getting constant information on where they are. You just don't seem very like Yeah dude. Wow, that was concerning to watch. Yeah, now you have to really scramble. Like, you are under a lot of pressure now. Because you essentially didn't really start playing until, like, right now. Applying a lot of pressure. You should hook her. You need somebody dead soon. You need somebody dead at, at like, around two gens, and it's already, already about to be at one gen. And you have nobody death hook. Now, the moment she comes off hook, you need to come back and get her out of the game. I know it's quote unquote the mean thing, but, like, that's what you gotta do. Because like, you are behind. And booze on Oni? I've seen some people do that. I always find it really interesting. I think what I currently do is I use... Uh, ultimate Weapon, Corrupt, Deadlock. I, I think I put on Grim Embrace today. I think I just straight up ran through Slowdown. Because I was just trying to buy enough time to get my daily done. So I just had to get the three rushes, or four rush downs. Hey, you gotta get that boy out of the game. You'll still make that hook. That is a good point, I guess. Like, if you can get an early hit because of it, that's a good point. It just seems like it would be, like, it's good in your normal power, and then once you would get, like, once you're in your power, it would be kind of useless, which would be my worry. Because, like, you can circumvent most windows, windows just by being good at the, at the, uh, demon dash, you know? Once again, why are you not clearing your power to down it? You spend a lot of time outside your power for, like, seemingly no reason. Like, that guy didn't have any pallets to work with, he just would have been dead and down. Well, not dead, but just down. You just would have him down. But you just decided to just normally hit him for some reason while he didn't have any resources to work with? Oh, that's unfortunate. But she ended up running into you. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, you need her dead. Then Alan next. I like the attempt, I respect that. I respect the hell out of that. But I'm not sure what you were doing. <laughs> that I'm not sure. That was interesting. No, don't leave the death hook gamer. No. You need... Okay. Yeah, you needed somebody dead like a long time ago. Still leaving somebody is death hook is not good. 
There's multiple gems that are nearly done. Yeah, and the fact that she's the saddle gamer too, and you keep leaving her up is why you're having to carry people long distances and potentially lose hooks. So getting her out is, has like a double motivation. Instead, you choose to chase somebody who and hook somebody who has zero hook states up until this point, which does nothing for you when the game's this far along. Yeah, the game's essentially over because both these gens are at like 80, 90 percent. Yeah, don't. You, I wouldn't chase them all the way back here. Yeah, I would. Yeah, exactly. Good, good. Just take your power and go straight back because both of the gens that are close to finish are on the top side of the map. Chasing Steve deep into the map right now would be throwing. You have a very, very tight 3 gen, but you should. That's not good. You, you need this Lori dead like three minutes ago. She should not be actively still in this game. Yeah, the only reason I don't bring Brutal on him is because like, once, once again, once you're in the uh, mid dash, you, you already deal with pallets extremely quickly. But it is a good pick for before that point. You're not getting that one done. You finally get her dead. Your next target should be Alan Wake. Yeah, Alan should be your next target. Luckily, you have a pretty good three gun. Well, you're running out of kicks on that gen. You've dilly dallied a little too much. They just healed up, but like, that's more blood for you on the map, and you already have your power, so that's actually not too big of a, of a deal. Not a big issue. And that's just more wasted time on their part. Once again, chasing somebody who is, it's not death if you get them is not beneficial for you. I don't know if you don't realize who's death hook and who's not, and you haven't kept track of that, or if you just think that this is the better option for some reason. And now you're chasing away from your 3 gen. You have a very, very tight 3, three gen, and you're leaving it. While wow, multiple gens are, like, fairly far along. That is, uh... Not the best. Unfortunately, your power just ran out. Because that that's your death Alan Wake in the main. Yeah, you're doing the right thing here. Just take the hook. Apply pressure and then worry about getting Alan later. Now David will be death hook off. He gets a quick save next time. So you'll have two death hook people. Yeah, now that you don't actually have to track survivors and they're all just coming to you because of the three gen, you're having a much better time. You spent a lot of time running this match not sure where people were and kind of like wandering about. And that hurts your efficiency a lot. I hate that bug that he looks straight down. It's so bad. I hate it on Twins and now I hate it on him. You heard them actually working on that gem. Okay, you found your Death of Gamer though, which is better. If you can down him quickly, this is absolutely the better option. Yeah, you should have probably rushed that. What the heck? That was some lag. I saw you freeze in place. That's not good. Oh, you could have hit that. That's unfortunate. He's down here though. Good. Kill him. And then go pressure that gen again. Oh no. Oh, that's so sad. Dude, I got a hit, Jackie. Yep, it's finally done. Hopefully it is as helpful as I <laughs> tried to make it out to be. Okay. Luckily, you're in a situation where you have at least two people dead, so. Should be able to get at least a 3k here. Oh, 
Yeah, I don't think they realize he can be grabbed off exit gates, so he just kind of tried to bolt basically do that when he can. He just learned the hard way that you can't do that. <laughs> Steve, you were barely part of this match, don't you, Beck? Okay, so, in terms of the match review, um, their perks, besides, like, the double sprint burst, which is kind of obnoxious, there wasn't really the perks that cost you this game. Um, in terms of your main takeaways for the things that you could do to improve better, uh, improve and get better, is, first off, um, I would pick a more precise info perk, like Ultimate Weapon, because it seems like you have a hard time tracking and keeping... Uh, a good sense of where the survivors are at, at at given points of the match and as a result because you didn't know where people were you spent a lot of time like wandering around and match time is gen time so time spent not pressuring the survivors or the gens is time that the generators are getting done so i would put something like ultimate weapon on that gives you more consistent and precise info that way you don't spend as much downtime uh quite literally doing nothing and kind of wandering around uh your second takeaway is that you spent a lot of time in this match outside your power and you start getting your getting into your power and even when you start getting into your power there's sometimes where like like that example where you had steven a dead zone you chose to just m1 him instead where it just would have been nice to be in your power and start downing people that you've decided to hold your power for some reason so like at first you weren't picking up your blood which you should always be plucking up your blood as oni and then after that you seem kind of hesitant at points to use your power outside of your power you're just 115 mana with katana you are not a very impressive force um so you should ideally be in your power as much as possible. So the fact that you're hesitating to either get your blood to earn it or having it charged but not using it was hurting you a lot, uh, like like a fair fair bit. Uh, and your la your final takeaway is that Lori and Alan Wake were death hook for a great deal of that end game, but you kept leaving them to chase people who had very 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 low amount of hook states. Like that, like you shouldn't be hooking a fresh person when the last two gens are nearly done, especially if you have had, if you have death hook gamers like actively in the match. You should have killed Lori and then you should have immediately went after Alan Wake. The fact that you prolonged killing them meant that they could actively hop back on gens and in Lori's case, actively try to sabo you over and over. So you should have got them out of the game as quick as possible, but you kind of left them up. A 3v1 and a 2v1 are much, much easier to win than a 4v1. So you should have gotten rid of them sooner. Yeah. Those are the three things that you could have done better in that match.